When the government does something right, they have a tendency to mess it up. So it is with the Department of Homeland Security's early announcement of an additional release of 35,000 HTB workers for the April cycle. As of the filming of this video, April 27th, those workers have still not been released. Seasonal Employment Alliance, the awesome lobby group, says, hey, we might hear by the end of this week, maybe the start of next week, but for many, this might already be cold comfort. It might be too late. It might just not be enough especially our landscapers and some construction crews and other businesses. But the release is coming, although it looks to be now, timing-wise, in line with past years. So what does this mean if you need workers? You know, is there good news embedded in this? Let's talk about it after the break. So what do we know? What do we know about this additional release of workers that we were supposed to get that's now delayed? The Seasonal Employment Alliance, which you can see them on screen here, um, has been tweeting out updates and, uh, and providing other updates for members. And essentially we think that maybe by the end of this week, maybe by the start of next week, you would, uh, in general, by the end or at the very end of April, start of May, new workers will be released. That'll be a fully a month after the start date needed by most businesses. And really, if we're being honest, and everybody knows this, businesses like landscapers, anywhere, you know, outside of the Northy North, need their workers starting in March, but we, we all kind of agree that April 1 is, is an okay start date uh, for landscapers to apply for. For, even though their need, if you really looked at it, starts in March in most places. I mean, if you're a Southeast landscaper, a Texas landscaper, you probably need workers in February, let's be honest. Anyway, you're not gonna get them. You're not gonna get them at least until June because even if this is released at the end of April, so let's say April 30th, it's, it's going to be a, a, a time period that, that is going to be required to process the USCIS application and to get the workers into the country. What does this mean? We're going to talk about it. Um, so I want to I want to go through this. I want to go through two things in this video. One, what does this mean for your chances of getting workers? What does it mean for supply and demand um, of these additional workers for your particular kind of business? And then what can you expect timing wise? I said in a video that uh, I posted right when this announcement happened that there's going to be really high demand for these additional workers, higher than in prior years because the announcement came so early. Well. That announcement was not followed up with action. You know, we're still waiting on the final rule from the Department of Homeland Security, uh, which says how one can apply for those additional workers, when, when they can be applied for, it's already been a month. So that demand that I initially projected, thinking that the rule be announced imminently within a few days of the DHS announcement, and again, um, that announcement you can kind of see here, and there's links at the bottom of this video for it. Um, it's been a month. And so a lot of the demand I was thinking was going to come from landscapers, uh, maybe uh, fish manufacturers. Um, it was going to come from forestry uh, uh, em employers. Um, it was going to come from uh, hotels and hospitality employers. Now, the hospitality employers still need workers. I mean, they, they're in dire straits. Uh, food service, maybe, you know, the, the places like that always need workers. But the landscapers, I think, for the most part, are out of it, right? And so the demand has gone down and we have a higher than ever before allotment, right? 35,000 workers additional as opposed to the 20,000 or so that have been released in prior years during this time. So I think if you are in need of workers, you got a pretty good chance of getting them. If you already have your full certification from the Department of Labor, full certification, that means that you filed your prevailing wage, you filed your 9142, the 9142 came back not just as approved, but came back fully certified because you sent in that recruitment report. And you get this thing called full certification, which I'll put up on screen here, okay? This is what it should look like, okay? Here, okay? It's gonna look like that. In fact, let's zoom in so it's here, here. That's what it should look like. If you have that, uh, what this additional release requires you to do is send that full certification along with the I-129 form and a whole bunch of other things to the USCIS for processing. You're going to want a premium process, pay that $1,500 fee per application, and uh, you know bring in workers. As we talked about before, you can bring in either returning workers, which is the bulk of the allocation, or new workers. 
If you are looking to bring in new workers, you don't have returning workers from, to choose from, you want to go with a recruitment agency. You, uh, you want to make sure that you start working with them now if you want them, uh, because you're going to want to interview those workers, see if they fit your culture, if they fit your company, if they, uh, if they, what their level of English is, what their level of skills may be. And in general, you want to be looking at you know several several countries to get that mix of workers that, that, that you need. You know, you have these countries, if you're looking for new workers and everywhere else for workers who are returning, meaning that they have returning workers had H2B certification in 2019, 2020, or 2021. And again, I think if you do this on time, you do it quickly, you do it well, and you are, and meaning you, you already have your full certification, you have a really good chance of getting those workers. Timing, when are they going to come in? All right, well, if you're working with a recruitment agency and, and you do the work up front of you know, finding these workers and you file all your USCIS paperwork on time. Let's take, for example, May 1st, okay? May 1st is our starting line, May 1st, right here, okay? Uh, what's going to happen first is that USCIS has 15 days to process your application that you turn in. And you're gonna overnight that with FedEx in duplicate and with the full certification paperwork and everything else that USCIS asks for, It'll take 15 days. So if we start at May 1st, we're at May 16th, okay? May 16th, you have USCIS approval. You're going to get an email uh, from the USCIS Premium Processing Department that's gonna look like this, okay? It's going to have your number, your approval number. You're going to use that approval number to you know, open up a, a visa case for the workers that you wanna bring in. If you're working with a recruiter, they'll do all this for you, but that's your visa number right there, okay? Let's say best case, best case in a consulate, those people are gonna be able to get interviews within two weeks, two weeks. It used to be like pretty much faster, but right now best case is two weeks. So your workers get their interview June 1st. At the interview, they get stamped, they get everything done let's say a day or two, June 3rd, they're coming to the United States and depending where you are in the country, they can be here by June 4th, 5th, 6th, whatever. So fastest possible, in my opinion, that your workers can get here is in that first week of June. Now, if you're a little slower on getting your paperwork in, if you're not doing premium processing, um, if, if the workers get stuck at the consulate for some reason, and that can be extended, and so you could be looking at mid-June to July, okay? When do you lock in your workers, right? When do you lock in the fact that you have a visa? As soon as USCIS approves you, you are locked in for that visa number, and you have time to bring in those workers. So if they get stuck, don't panic. You are locked in for that visa number, okay? So 35,000 visas are out there. Remember, only... 23,500 returning workers, 11,500 are your new workers. Okay, keep that in mind. We think uh, the rule is going to be published at the end of April, early May, uh, hopefully giving us uh, an immediate filing date that we can get things in. And we think, I think that, you know, the earliest you can get your workers here is first week of June, okay? So that's the update. I hope it helps. If you need help, Okay, if you need help, um, I'm happy to help you file these USCIS packages. They're not simple. Nothing about this is simple. The office is ready and happy to help. All right, take care and good luck.